All right, let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to your favorite podcast. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, back at it again. This is uh, Eric Griffin, your favorite podcaster. Well, I hope I'm your favorite podcaster, but even if I'm not, I really appreciate you guys listening and watching the show. Uh, We're not going to keep the music going too long this time. (laughs) Um, You know, a lot of stuff going on in the world, as you already know, and um, there's been a lot of heavy stuff, uh, people talking and people telling you what you should and should not say, what you should and should not do, but the show also must go on. And I'm doing that this week. I uh, didn't do any woo-woos last week. I had a big, uh, very heartfelt opening about the Black Lives Matter movement and everything that's going on and what I feel about it. And I am going to do another long solo episode about what I more that I feel that's going on. But for now, you know, uh, during the coronavirus and all that, I was here as an escape and I want to continue to be an escape um, for some people. You know, it can't be 24 hours of just thinking about this all the time. You know, you need to have a rest. You need to collect yourself and you need to laugh. You need to think about other things and then you can come back to the heavy stuff. I mean, that's just how it works. It's just better for you. It's better for everybody. So I don't know if it's right or wrong. If I offend some people, I, you know, it is what it is. I hope you understand what's going on. So anyways, uh, uh, I have a very fun, light episode. Uh, The great Tony Baker is on. We talk about movies. We talk about his career. We talk about his rise. And it's uh, inspirational, uh, it's inspirational stuff. Uh, you know, he—I don't think he even really wanted to be a stand-up at first. So we talk about all that stuff. We get into a little bit about coronavirus and all that because I recorded this. Uh, it's a pre-recorded episode because once again, I keep telling you, I didn't know who I was going to be able to talk to or when, so I just tried to bank as many as I could. So I'm still releasing some of those. And but again, I'm going to do a solo episode soon, probably the next episode or a bonus episode, just uh, really going into all the things that I feel about what's going on. So I like to have a little bit of everything. Sometimes I'm light, sometimes I'm heavy. And that's just how we are as human beings. Uh, we're, we're layered. And so this is one of those layers of just strictly entertainment, uh, just, you know, just as an, an escape from everything that's going on and just, uh, you know, fun, informative episode uh, about uh, just two guys shooting the shit. So I hope you enjoy. Oh, yeah, it's real, Chris. <laughs> Crisp. All right. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, here he is, the man, the myth, Mr. Tony Baker. <laughs> What's happening, man? Good to see you. You know what, man? I was telling you the other day, like, man, I'll be on your page for like, <laughs> I'll be on your page for like thirty minutes sometimes, like, you know, man, it's just me. That's and, a long time. Yeah, it's just me and Cordell. <laughs> Cordell. <laughs> Yeah, you do. You know, you're doing a great job. It's just I don't. I, I don't know if it's something about your voice. I don't know if it's something about like uh, it's obviously the comedy of it, like whatever the situation in these videos that you make. But it's something mm. about your voice too that just makes it like you know, <laughs> you, you could you don't even have to see. You could just hear, and then you want to see because you want to know what is he talking about. But it's pretty good, <laughs> man. And this is like Thanks, really bro. like you. You turn it into that guy. Like, how do you feel about that? <laughs> It's 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 crazy, man. Because you know, I did it. I did my first one in like 2013, just to do it for fun. I thought it was funny. Yeah. And then I did another one, and then nothing really. You know, it was just I did those two videos, and then um, when I reposted one, like in 20, maybe 15, 16. Right. It. I think 2016. And then uh, maybe 2015, then it went viral. I was like, oh, let me keep these going, man. Yeah, and then look at a million followers later. (laughs) You know, but you know what the crazy thing about it is just this business is so weird that like whatever you set out and you think you want to you want to make it because of because of a, you know, right. And then B, C, D, you know, you don't even think about these things and it could be one of those, you Mm -hmm. know. Cause you know you you always wanted to be a stand up. I mean, I don't even know that actually. It was was stand up like your main thing that you always no. wanted to do? Okay. No, actually, actually, I wanted to act. Oh, gotcha. I wanted to be an actor, and then I was like, man, let me think about all those stand up comedians that transitioned into acting. Yeah, I was like, man, that seems like a good way to get noticed is to do stand up. And then I was like, 
let me try stand up. And then I did it one time at the high high, and uh, I fell in love with it immediately. Yeah, I was yeah. like, oh, yeah, this, <laughs> this right here. So, so now acting is second. And it's like, I just want to get on a TV show or get a good acting role just so I can fill the clubs up. Right, right. It's it's fun. And you know, the, but okay, it's funny you say that because the funny thing now is this other thing that you're doing, which is acting, is voice acting. Right, right. It's going to still, it's going to be the thing that's going to end up filling the clubs up. Exactly. <laughs> Something I would have never imagined right? or thought of. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, it's so, it's so strange, right? It's just, yeah. it's just strange how to be. You know, because we were like, we were probably around the same age. So it's like, you know, we're not 40s, right? How old are you? I'm 42. I'll be 43 next month. Oh, so I'm older than you. But it's like, mm-hmm. that's still around the same, where we remember the old school ways of stand up, where it was like, right. you know, you, you were a good com- comedic act. And then the next thing you know, you got on some late night show. And then mm-hmm. you got a sitcom. And then mm-hmm. that was that was the end of it. You know, you just boom, boom, right. boom, boom. But I mean, like, there's so many different ways to make it right now that it's it, like, there's no blueprint anymore. No, it's the wild west. It's, it's really, the wild west, man. Wild west. It's crazy, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, anything goes. Anything can pop. Anything can make you. Anything can change your life. Whether you, if you in the video games on the side, you could blow up from video games. They be like, oh, he does stand up too. Yeah. And then you done blew up from that. You making money from this, and it's just like YouTube. I'm opening boxes. This yeah, is yeah. like. <laughs> It's like anything can happen now. Yeah, I know. It's like, and then it's, it's, it's uh, but, uh, but an element of it is like trying to catch that, kind of catch that viral, which is so, which is so ironic that we're in this coronavirus. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? It's like, yep. we, it's like we want our careers to like be, to spread like Corona apparently spreads. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know what right. I mean? We need it mm-hmm. that fast. Cause my, you know, my, my shit, some, I feel like my, mine's like the chicken pox. You know, you get it once and then that's it. <laughs> that's it. You, you immune after that. You know, you got exposed to it early and yeah, now it just yeah. doesn't even pop up. Here's a, here's the thing though. Even though um, everything is the wild west now, anything can happen. The art of stand up itself remains pure. J- just like the art of it itself. Like whether, whether, whether people come to you by different like avenues, when they get in there to yeah. see you live, you still have to be good on that stage, right? I don't. You know what? I I I, I don't know if I. I used to feel that way. Uh, you know, I really used to feel that way. And what I and then and I thought I think that my attitude has changed because mm-hmm. we might look at it as comics and be like, "There's a certain way stand up should be done." You know, we just mm-hmm. feel that way, even even if that's a wrong feeling. There's a certain way. There's a purity we th- we we think we that stand up needs to have, right? But I realize that has nothing to do with putting butts in the seats. It has oh, nothing. Yeah. It has nothing to do with actually why fans like you. I mean, mm-hmm. there are people who now do podcasts, okay, who say weren't doing stand up before and are now doing stand up because the sta- it's not even stand up. It's just I'm doing a public event. I mean, your agent don't right. even call it stand up agent. They're called public right. appearance agents. Mm-hmm. Right. So a lot of people are doing public appearances and it looks like stand up, but mm-hmm. it's not necessarily this art form that you're talking about. It's kind of like softball. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You know, you play in softball, it looks like baseball, but it's not well, really it's, baseball. You it's know? It's softball. It's softball, you know. And the softball, the softball is kind of hard, <laughs> but it's just not it's just not as hard as the, you know, you baseball. Know, so, but so, it's, so I, I I know we have this kind of old school mentality about stand up comedy, but what I'm realizing is it's really about I think the first thing is about connecting with your fans, them really appreciating what you do, whether mm-hmm. and it don't have to be this high level stand up, you know what I mean? Right. It just doesn't have to. So it's like, and that's hard. I think that's hard for people, for me, because because mm-hmm. I came up when I came up, it was about how we thought it was before. It was like how everybody did it in the past. And so now right. it's like it's just not like that anymore. There's all mm-hmm. these different ways. You know, you got like people who got, uh, you know, s- somebody might have a weird YouTube video presence. And next thing you know, they- they're like the biggest stand up in the world, like that type of thing. You know, it's like that guy, not that that mama, somebody, whatever his name is, the white dude who like, you know, he's on you. He was he's got these huge face Facebook presence. He was the dude that was at JFL and they booed him. 
and then oh wow and, and, they, and they were getting and then he was getting into fights with comics whatever but anyway darren something or other but anyway yeah he um you know he wasn't a stand-up he didn't uh-huh. you know but he just was doing these characters on youtube and facetime I mean Facebook, and the next thing you know, right. it was like people wanted to come see him. So now he has a he's a touring act. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I, I think I think we should start labeling that that type of comedy differently than 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 stand up comedy because it sounds like that guy. If you come see him live, you want to see him do those characters. So in essence, he sounds like a one man show right. as opposed to just a stand up comedian. And there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing but, wrong with that at the, all. But the problem is that they get blurred because we're performing at the exactly. same places. You exactly. Know, you know, that's so what it's it like, is. Yeah. And so the people are confused. So it's like, because uh, when, I, when I say stand-up comedian, I, I automatically think of people that stand up there, they tell the jokes. Yeah. They're like, yo, yeah, so this, that, and the third. And then, you know, you got the, you got the people like him or, who are doing characters up there. You got people that are doing the podcast live yeah. where it's kind of a laid back flow, which is dope, too. Yeah. But but it's a different. It's like the like. Um, I, I love this. This podcast group called 80, 805 South. Oh, yeah. Those are the guys oh. from those are the guys from Wild and Out. <laughs> I love that because it's a it's a it's a free flowing. Yeah. Pod, they got couches up there. It's just like a free for all of just pure. Well, whoever put that together, silly, just oh, genius. It, they they, they just looks, said they said they capital. What, what I'm saying, they capitalized on the 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 technology and yes. climate and took advantage, you know. And then now they're out there like they they sell out and like you oh know, my you god. Goes, but it, but it's but the, you know it's like synergy. The some of the parts are worth you know the the the, the parts are worth worth more than the whole you know what i mean i mean yeah. the whole is worth more than the sum of its parts is really what i mean synergy right you know because maybe those particular guys wouldn't be huge selling acts but if they had done it themselves in the, in the mm-hmm. way that we are saying you're supposed to do it and they just right. oh, let's get together let's use the the, the fame from uh, this and then let's start a podcast and then all these things came together and now they out here you know it's crazy. Right. Yeah, man. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, the Wild West. Yeah, man. So, and, and I'm sitting back here like, damn, did I miss the boat? Am I trying to figure out the way? And then I started right. a podcast and this season, let's see what happens. And it's just, it, you know, I don't know. It's just, it's interesting. Uh, it's just, it's just interesting to like intellectualize what's happening in the comedy world to try to figure yeah. out what suits me, what's best for me. And we don't even know because you might do something. The next thing you know, like you, like your situation, it's like, you just said, Oh, I'm doing these things I think are funny. And then everybody's like, more, more, yeah. Tony, yeah. more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what happened. I was like, oh, all right, here we go. Yeah. And so luckily it was something that I enjoyed initially because that's what it's all about. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. what do we enjoy and then we can keep doing it consistently. Yeah. And then consistency is the main ingredient, man. So, uh, you know, as like ethnic comics, you know, uh, us, you mm-hmm. know, urban, you know, you, I wouldn't even consider you an urban comic. You know what I mean? I, 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 mm-hmm. I don't know. I, it's, you know, what's crazy is like, I think that when you're not white, you have to have a label. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like you have to have some kind of like, it can't just be like, oh, the comedian such and such. It's like only right. white comics get that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they, ne- they never get the extra label like yeah. we do. Yeah. Or the, and, and then... And then the the then, or then like the black comics become like the superstar, you know, like right. the biggest comic. But that's the yeah. only time that they're like, oh, b- just but just a regular white dude. <laughs> yeah. Just be just oh the, oh that guy's a com- you know a comic. It's just it's weird. But mm-hmm. like so, but but what do you think your audience is though? You know what, man? Um, based on based on the people that that show up to the shows and stuff like that. Usually black crowd, majority black. Uh, a lot of couples come through a lot of, um, I would say 24 to like early fifties. Well, that's everybody. Um, <laughs> cause, Cause I know, I noticed like predominantly like right in the 30 range, but like I see just, you know, I see the young and I see like the older side, I see a lot of uh, animal lovers pulling up. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, so it's just like, yo, we watch a lot of family. 
like a lot of families show up because man, I watch my I watch your videos with my kids and they show up. So uh, so awesome. you get those. So have you gone? So have you gone clean? On no, stage? no, I'm not. I'm not clean. Oh, I'm not, I can do. I can do clean because like when I was on tour with Kev on stage, we were doing a clean show because right. Kev is clean. But uh, no, I still, I still cut. I'm, I've, I've always been PG thirteen though. Got you, got you. Like not too, you know, f bomb, f bomb, f bomb. But occasionally, I'll throw it in there. Is there a part of you that's thinking like maybe you should just go clean so you can like, and then, and, and then you would be like, because then you talk about families for sure. Families would show up like, like, right. like Gabriel. You know what I mean? Like he got like, no. there's like nine year olds in his crowds. You know what I mean? Like he. He they, they, he he sets it up where the whole family can come, grandma right. down to you know a, a four year old, and he just makes the show fun like that. I mean, it seems to be very profitable too. Right. I I didn't even notice he was clean like that until yeah. you just said it. I was like, wow, he is clean. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I I don't want to I don't want to get stuck in that. Yeah. But then, why, then, but, why, then, but why do you think it's stuck? Tell me why you feel like it's being stuck. Because of the way the way I. The way I operate comedically and creatively, I like to be able to venture into different things and just say what I want without having to be like, ah, oh, I can't say that. I can't. Oh. I can't say that. I can't go here. I can't talk about sex. I can't do this. I can't do that. Um, whether, but if I keep it like new, neutral in terms of I, I can go here or there, I lean towards clean because. A lot of times I don't need the extra cusses or whatever. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. But <laughs> but when I'm on stage, it's just like, no, nah, I got to be able to talk about what because I've done cruise ships, man. Me too, me too. And, and 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 when I'm restricted, I just hate the feeling of like. But it's only know. it's only we only feel restricted because like this is a part of our vernacular, like it's a right. part of like how we talk in everyday life. I mean, see, I've started to notice that myself. Like, so sometimes I'm on stage. And if I know I should be cleaner, like you're looking out at the crowd, and you might be like, "Ah, oh, this is like it's a seven o'clock show on a Sunday." Let me, you know. But then, like, I go. So then I'll say a a, a joke that I normally say "fuck" three times, you right? Know? And then I go, maybe I don't need to say "fuck," you know, right? And then like mm -hmm. you don't, and then you still get a similar laugh, and then you say to yourself, "Well, oh, man, maybe I don't need to." <laughs> right, right. Maybe I don't yeah. need to curse as much as I do because I realize I am so natural on stage, like naturally meaning mm -hmm. to say I'm being myself as much as I can. And I like to, right. I like to curse. I like to throw a motherfucker in. I like to say bitch. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I used to get in trouble. People say like, you, you need to stop calling women bitches. I say, I'm not. I, no, no. I call everybody a bitch. I just like to say a bitch. Right. It just sounds yeah. good in my voice. Bitch. You know? Right. <laughs> and you throw fat bitch. You know, whatever it is. Big bitch. Like I just, I just love saying <laughs> whatever. Right. Something with bitch sounds great. You know, but mm -hmm. I'm, you know, sometimes you just you look at it and you go, maybe I don't need to say that. Then you get used to it. And then it doesn't feel like a hindrance. Then it don't feel like. You know, it just becomes a natural thing where, like, because there are some people that just they just don't curse like that, and they, yeah. they seem to be the ones doing the best. <laughs> oh man, they they clean up and like and like for me and I and let me let me rephrase let me rephrase it up. Please, please. When I say when I say clean, like, um, I I don't need the cussing. I don't need the cussing. Like, if, if I had, if people wanted me to not curse, I can do that. But I need the freedom. To talk about any topic gotcha, I want. Got you, got you. It's like if I want to talk about sex, I want to be able to go there without having to worry. I can keep it clean, cuss word wise, but the subject matter is very see, mature. See, that's very interesting because that's that's the distinction that like sometimes you don't know, you know, you, you know, because because sometimes I've even been in places where they go, oh, we don't mind if you curse, but please don't talk about, you know. Sex, like sex, is the one. Yeah. That, that's the thing. Yeah. And in, and, the in, thing. and in the way you you would talk about it, you know. But it's like, but like, I don't even find myself, you know, being like, you know, then, 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 you know, you open a pussy up, and then you, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. I just, I, I don't know, man. I mean, I get it. It's like, like when the Super Bowl, the halftime show, mm -hmm. you know, there were two sides of people that were like. You know, I was like, "Oh, that was great! It was fun. There was nothing right. inappropriate about it." I thought. Right. But then there's other people who are parents who are like, "Look, when I turn on the Super Bowl, I don't want to have to worry about oh, I gotta like cover my kids' eyes because these Latina booties are just jiggling all over the place." And so right. it's like, so because so, 
you know, you know what I mean. So it's like, what makes something dirty or or dirty comedy? You know, it's. I agree with you saying it's not just the curse words, right? Right, right. Yeah, it's it's that subject matter, and it's funny how we pick and choose. Like, what's the offense? Yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah. Cause, Cause we'll be like, oh, oh, keep the kids away from the sex and the booty jiggles, but then <laughs> you, you don't find your kids watching like an action movie where people are getting killed and broke off and murdered, and you know, it's like, cause I, I know I was guilty of that as a father. I was like, yeah, my kids can watch Bad Boys too, but then if it was like a sex scene in the movie, like, oh, oh hey, 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 you know, cause yeah, it's weird, right? Yeah, because I would tend to look at the action scenes as more fantasy. Like, all right, y'all, y'all know y'all can't be doing this, but then the sex can very much happen. So yeah. it's just like, hey, hey, hey. Yeah, but that's like I, I think I think that's an American thing. I think we have a yeah. real big hang up on sex. I mean, you go to mm-hmm. Europe and you can see a, a soap commercial with, with titties at eight o'clock. You know what yeah. I mean? And and they just like you know it's it's why are we so why do you think we're so scared of the human form? I don't know. I, I feel like that 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 kind of hung over from the American society trying to break away from the European, you know, aesthetic and becoming more. Oh, we're grounded. America is all about family and God and religion. And, you know, we're going to keep it wholesome. And, you know, you can have a gun, but, you know, keep your woman covered. And, yeah. you know, you have a family and it's just oh, cover that body up. Yeah, and you're looking at yeah, we seem to be scared of. I think I think you know what's weird is I think we're scared of, in particularly the f- like the female form, like like we oh. want it we want it covered up. We want it, uh, you know, we want yeah. it, we want it hidden. We want it like you know, we only want to bring it out when we want it. You know, it's, right. it's a weird feeling, right? Yeah, and I, I everybody loves the female form, yeah, even other women, yeah, but they scared oh. of it. <laughs> Oh, huh. women would be what? like, "Girl, look at your body." I know. Girl. I know. <laughs> you know what's funny? I feel like in comedy, we very much are. You know. You know what's funny is like, so like when you have a male a type personality comic on stage, mm-hmm. like like Chris D'Elia, for instance. You know, mm-hmm. so his sexuality is enhancing his performance. Mm-hmm. Because the women are out there like, oh, I want to, oh, I love, he's so funny and handsome. And then the dudes, yeah. and the dudes are like, oh, I want to be this dude, this dude, right? right. You know? Yeah. And, but then put a hot chick on stage, and her sexuality is not enhancing her performance, but somehow right. a roadblock to people really connecting. Yeah. You know? It just feels, you right? Isn't it a weird. Yeah. I- I've noticed that. I've noticed like when the when you get the 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 hot female comedian and they get up there and they're just talking about dating and stuff. It's just a different reaction to that, yeah. as opposed to like you know an unattractive. You know, maybe like a big a big girl gets up there. Man, dating is hard for me out here. And everybody's like, man, this is <laughs> she crazy. I know. And like, I don't know why that dynamic. Yeah. Like a fat black, like a fat black woman, they don't even count her as a woman. <laughs> you know what no, I mean? No, it's just like yes, <laughs> bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Every time, yes, bitch. I be going, y'all. Oh, she crazy, and they don't, they don't feel threatened in the audience that she can take my man right here. Yeah, and maybe oh, that's the women. True, that's is, true. Maybe the women. Oh, she. Oh, you. You like this? You, I know. You, you feeling this right here? So it's like I know it's such. Oh. It's such so messed up. I'm. I'm just doing. Yeah. I'm just making an observation. I don't know. I'd have to ask a female comic. I have to have a hot yeah. female comic on the show and be like, "Hey, how mm. is this for you?" But just my observation. It feels like that. It feels like I always. I always say like like I always when I think about myself, I go, I have to be funny. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like I can't. You know. When I go on stage, they not they not going. Ooh, that dude handsome. They going. Ah, oh, he's funny. It's like you know, I've 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 seen like the handsome comments come off stage, and I've heard girls be like, the first thing they say is, "Oh, he's so hot," you know. Uh-huh. So it's like, yeah. so you weren't listening. Like, was there? <laughs> so so what it becomes is the comedy becomes like an extra, you know. Mm, but okay. for me, yeah. it's all the comedy. <laughs> I don't get no. The thing, ex- is, <laughs> Maybe the I'm thing just about you though, my thing. I don't know, but it just it feels the, like that in comparison. The thing about you though, you look like you're funny though. 
<laughs> like, like when I is see that a you, Tony, is that a top compliment? It, you know what? It, it is because when I see you, I remember the first time I saw you, I was like, "Yo, this dude look like he' about to be funny." Or <laughs> I don't know what it is. You know, how some people just look like a serial killer, or like some people look like, yeah. <laughs> It looked like he was just about to, and then it was right. Yo, I was right, and I was like, "Yo, this dude." Because it's, it's certain people that be like, "You know what? I'm gonna sit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna listen to what he got to say." Yeah, and I'm you. sitting there, and I'm smiling already. Yeah, the, comedy's, like, the comedy's right here. I get it. The, the, the comedy, <laughs> the, the look is like, man, this dude. I'm already laughing. I know, but I but I know what you're saying about like so when like a, a, a an attractive female is on stage and she starts talking about stuff. Like if you're if as a dude in a crowd. And you meet mm-hmm. your girl. I mean, I, w- depending on how secure your relationship is, as a dude, you right. might not be able to, you know, laugh the way you want to laugh or even right. enjoy. You know what I mean? It's like mm-hmm. I was like my girl. We we sitting here watching. She puts on this Netflix Netflix show, right? And it's uh, all surfer boys. You know, mm-hmm. it's these surfer dudes with their shirts off and stuff. And I was looking at her like, you want to watch this? And she was like, yeah. yeah, this reminds me of when I was a kid. And I was like, okay. So, like, it's a double standard because, <laughs> right? you know, it's like, okay, because I can't be like, oh, that's what you want? Oh, you want this? <laughs> you know, because then. <laughs> the answer, but, but are you thinking that? The answer might be yes, but I'm not even thinking that. I just think it's funny. The way I deal with it, I was like, oh, look at you getting all hot and bothered by these, like, young, you know, I'm right. totally fine with it. But, like, then the, the, the other way, it might not be like that. You know, the other way, right. be, if I put on a show, it's all bikini models, and you, you find yourself not being able to enjoy it the way you want to enjoy it. Because, it's, cause right. like, if there's a woman on screen to your girl, it's porn. <laughs> you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Even if it's not porn. <laughs> right, right. Oh, this is what we into, right? Here. <laughs> I know. It's like, this is sister act. What do you? <laughs> man because if, if you look at my if you look at my girl's instagram if you look at who she's following yeah she's following a whole bunch of just bad chicks they cut up ripped up yeah, yeah, yeah. just in shape booties every time I, I glance at her phone she's on i'm like she just got this eye candy city over there if you if you look at mine it's like mostly people i actually know in person yeah, or like to, you know it, it has to be 20, like that yeah, so it's just like, but I never got into the following the eye candy women on Instagram because that's just a rabbit hole that I don't want to get stuck in. Tony, we know your wife is standing right there. It's okay. You don't. You don't <laughs> have, you know, <laughs> who you bullshitting right now? Who you? Like, you about to be doing it like this? You know? Because I never. I, 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 cause you know. Because <laughs> you know, with me in particular. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but for real, it was always it was always like that because I was like, man, I can't be following these chicks, man, because because I I would I would find myself getting caught in those rabbit holes sometimes. It's just like women I didn't even follow. Oh, you yeah. see one and then yeah. you see yeah, it, yeah, and then yeah, you yeah. just like I know. Next I, when I when I got real serious with my girl, I had to like I think I unfollowed like five hundred people. <laughs> and I look I was looking like what am, what am I? Who is this? Like, yeah, I don't need it because at first it was like I just followed people back because they followed me, or I was like, mm. I was like, you know, especially if I took pictures with them at a show, it's good right. to follow them back. It's good to like, you know, because then it like spreads and it's like, and, and 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 girls are more popular, so it's like easier to follow girls and have girls spread the love. And then you just find yourself looking at again, you're just looking at eye candy. So then you know, it's yeah. like, and then and then Instagram was snitching. You know what I mean? Oh so like, yeah, they you know, was doing Instagram that. Was snitching, like you, you know, you liking pictures, and then there's like a whole thing. There's a whole. They should have just called it the thirsty page. You know what I mean? Right. The thirsty yeah. area you go to, and it's like, damn, look it up. Why? Why are they putting my business out on the street? <laughs> <laughs> All of. Yeah, man. They were like Eric Griffin was liking this. Did yeah. you see him? Did you see yeah. Eric Griffin <laughs> liking this? <laughs> yeah. And then like so, you know, so they got rid of that. Thankfully. Mm-hmm. But then, yep. but then the other thing that they had on there, which wasn't cool, is like so. Let's say you and I are following the same big titty chick. Mm-hmm. If I like her picture, you'll see when you go to the page, it says Tony Baker. Oh yeah. So yeah. so what was happening there would be like if I'm following the same person as my girls following because they like to follow a lot of girls too. Then right. it shows up Eric Griffin like. So then I was like, yeah. So then, then it turned into a thing. So I was like, you know what? I just, you know what I do now? I just, I don't like. You know, you know what you, you know what I do now? I just pick up my phone like this and I go, I like that. <laughs> yeah. That's all you. That's all you need. You don't need like, you don't need visual confirmation. You don't need like some physical confirmation that you appreciate what you're looking at. 
They just look. Right. Just look and go. Yeah. Imagine if like porno sites were like that, like a Pornhub. You had to. They do have likes and stuff on there. I think I don't they know. They do. And who's they doing do. that? Like who? <laughs> who's so intensely? <laughs> Now, now, if they have if they have a system where you can see everything you like on Pornhub, nobody would do it. That's a, that's a great that's a great way to keep track. <laughs> yeah, keep track of, of what you like. Oh yeah, because I we guess. see so much porn, we'd be like, man, where was that one scene I really enjoyed? <laughs> you yeah. can never find it again because yeah. you didn't know the people in it. Yeah, yeah, that'd be that'd be yeah. Yeah, but you can't. That'd be beneficial. I don't know, dude. What have you been watching since during this thing? I mean, we have this is you know what? This is my first podcast that I didn't open up with talking about how you doing in the corona. Because <laughs> it just turned. I was like, uh, like I saw Whitney Houston talking about that. Whitney Houston, Whitney Cummings talking on her thing about like everybody's asking about that. But I mean, this is what's going on right now. But like, how how right. are you, how are you getting along? Uh, I actually love this man. Other than the uh, the money loss and the lack of stage, yeah. Um, I love this because I needed I needed the break to just just sit down and just you know I'm still doing a lot here in terms of like content, but like um, this just being in the house and like chilling. I've been playing video games with my sons heavy and like uh, oh that's good good for you. I feel I feel like I've been spending less money. Oh, you, um, me too. Bro, yes. this I know exactly what you're saying. And not mm-hmm. just because we're thinking about money. It's just right. a natural, like, I'm going to the grocery store. I'm shopping for food. I'm cooking. I don't, I'm right. not just going. Because we, we was just going out to eat all the time. And just like, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. We're not, we're not browsing. Going, oh, I'll get this. Oh, wait, hey, they got a sweater over here. Yeah. Oh, let me get this here. It's like. Uh, so I've noticed my spending has decreased. Uh, the gas money, of course, uh, yeah. and so the silver lining for me is just you know the family time. I've been uh, not eating out as much. My weight is going down. Yeah, me too. Yeah, so it's just <laughs> like, and I see you be in there cooking too. The home cooked meals. Oh man, are always a better thing for us because you know what's going in the in the in the meal now. But dude, I find myself acting like I totally get it. I'm acting like turning into my mom from, but you know, because like mm-hmm. when I cook a, I cook. I'm like when I finish cooking, I'm like, okay, dinner's ready, you know. Yeah. And I'm like, get your ass down. You're like, you know, I'm telling, I'm screaming yeah. at my girl, break y'all, get out. <laughs> if the food is hot now. Get, yeah. get put the phone down. <laughs> you know, I get it. So it's like it's it's really interesting. Like yeah, so yeah, I've been cooking on Instagram. People like that, you know. Yeah. And I've been like, you. I, I go to this one company, Sun Basket. Mm-hmm. They're, they're not really a sponsor, but if you like, I could give a a, a a referral code, and you get forty dollars off, and I get forty dollars off. Oh, so, nice. that, so I don't even need them to make me an official sponsor. I'm just like cooking and being like putting it up and being like use my. And people have used it because it's actually yeah. really cheap. It's only like it's only like ten or eleven dollars per meal, and it serves two. Oh wow! Yeah, so of course you can increase. You can say, "Give me enough to serve four. Give me enough to serve." Yeah. You know, you know, and it'll be like more. But when you think of the cost of like, if you're if you're saying to me that this is like six seven dollars per person for a yeah. full ass, you know, a a, a, a perfectly ca- caloric intake meal. Yeah. Shit. So I mean, that's real cheap. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to tell you. But there's a lot of them like that. There's sun. You just look up pre pre like um. They have pre cooked ones. Then uh-huh. they have ones that like I think Blue Apron is one of those too. Blue Apron will they'll give you everything. So let's say you're cooking like chicken curry. They'll uh-huh. they'll give you the, the exact amount of curry sauce you need and a little thing. And they have yeah. the, the garlic, everything's there. You have to chop things up. You use like salt and pepper from oh, your wow. pantry and oil and you put it together and then they give you the instructions and you find yourself and then you find yourself using those recipes later. So now yes. like, let's say you cook some potatoes the way they say once. Now you know, oh, I know how to cook potatoes now. So yeah. now I'm like, let me get some potatoes and just cook them. So I do recommend, uh, but if you're going to use Sun Basket, make sure you get my f- referral code. Right, right, right. <laughs> Eric Griffin sent me. Eric Griffin sent me. Do they, do they get vegetarian and vegan options over there? Dude, they got a veg. I don't know if they have vegan. I think they have vegan, but it's vegetarian. Uh, you could do anything you want. You could do, I'm doing a paleo one. So it'll be like okay. a meat and a vegetable. But they got yeah. so many different types of low carb, high carb, whatever you want. They have all the different like uh, things. And they just give you everything you need. So you what what I like about it is you're not wasting anything. You know when you're right. like you're not you're trying to cook a meal and they say, 
you look at the recipe and it says like whatever, you go, okay, I got to go to the store. You can't just yes. go to the store and get one. You got to get like six onions and you got to get, you know, right. you got to get all the things. And then now yeah. you're like, but one, but once you start cooking, you realize you're always cooking. Like it's not okay. like, it's not like you're cooking one meal. You're cooking all your meals. Yeah. And that was something to get used to. Cause I cooked right. once and I was like, oh shit, that was dope. And then it was like, oh shit, there's five now. I have, there's another yeah. meal supposed to come. <laughs> Yeah, man. <laughs> you know, so I don't know. Yeah. So I've been doing so now, that. now, do you think do you think you're gonna cook more once we get our freedom? Yes. Well you I do okay. think because I actually enjoy that whole process. The cooking, mm-hmm. the making and the cleaning up. It's like a whole yeah. thing. Like it's a whole like you know, like I don't know, it's it's meditative, you know what I mean? Like it's, Oh man. You know what I mean? It's great. It's a good good thing, man. But I've been doing that too. I've just been playing video games, but I twitch online. Uh, I've been Me too. Uh, what do you play? I play Modern Warfare right now. I'm playing that too. I'm play. I've been playing it every night. Oh man, what do you? We gotta. I, I gotta get you on. We gotta play yeah. together. And I and I just I'll send you this little thing where you can put your face on my screen and we can just twitch together. Oh, that's dope. Yeah, uh, you you playing the new one right? Yeah, the Warzone. Yeah, and the, yeah. yeah, Warzone you, is dope. Did you buy the game? Did you buy it? No, I I bought it on Xbox, but I've been playing uh-huh. it also on PS4. I just downloaded okay. it for free on PS4. It's a free game and it's so fun. I mean, I I play. What I do is like I play with fans. So I just like okay. I play like like the quads with fans, and I'll be like, all right, yeah. first four to get in, first three to get in, we'll go. And I just they, right. boom, 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 and I boom, and they love it, you know. And I'm on there twitching yeah. and all this kind of stuff. So, you know, yeah, we got to play. That's a good. Idea. They got duo thunders. Let's do that. Okay, I'm glad to know you do oh, that. Yeah. You know who else plays? Ron Funches plays. Oh, does he? Yeah. Okay. So I got to get yeah. this all on. It'd be like me, you, Ron, we'd run like a trios or something, and we'll find oh, another person. Great. Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah. Because we, I literally, I'm telling you. I've been playing every night for the past like week and a half, and I actually I ended up buying the game just so I could do the multiplayer, the co-op. Yeah, that other and stuff's great. And we've been playing. Hey, I've been up at five, six in the morning. Just yeah, I know. And then, How, what have you been watching on TV? What have you been catching up on? What's your What's your Have you been like? Because that's something I've been doing. I've just been catching up on all kind of shows and stuff. You know what? Um, I watch uh, first. First of all, I finished uh, Ozark. Oh, season three, yeah, that was good. Finish that. I feel like that was the strongest season so far. You think so? Um, I think so. I think it goes three, one, two. Yeah, I agree um, with you about two. I don't think two was the strongest. I think, but I think they were still trying to. You know, the first season of something is always sometimes the best because mm-hmm. it, it this is that fresh idea in their head, and then right. they, and, they, and they executed it. Now it's like, all right, continue the world. Tell me more right. about this world, and they sometimes have trouble doing that. And then they then they yeah. get their shit together season three. Yeah, yeah. It's always it's usually like a dip in season two a lot of the times. Yeah, just because because it, it's not as fresh. But go ahead. What else you what right. else you watching? Um, so I, I I binged on that. I um, and really I always go back to movies, man. I always just watch movies. Yeah, what movies? Like, what movies have you been have you been watching old movies? Are you catching up on any of these new ones? Like, what have you been doing? I, I, I always go to the old joints because I, I just can't help it. Like I've been doing, I've been watching movies on my live, so I watched Blade. I love. I watched. <laughs> oh, the first Blade. Oh, the first Blade is just a perfect movie. <laughs> I, I think I think Wesley Snipes as Blade and Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man are the only two characters whose um, interpretation of those comic book characters surpass the comic book versions. Oh. I, I you know but, what I agree with you on that. Um Blade 1 I, but I also really enjoyed Blade 2. Me I enjoyed too? Blade 2, but Blade 3 go, go nah. like go kill yourself, you know what I mean? Like nah. Like like sometimes like Ryan Reynolds in that was just like I was like what is happening, bro? So, he was so much just pushing that comedy to the point it's like Oh my god. He finally got I think he was like at a ten and then finally yeah. for uh not Daredevil, what's the one he um uh Deadpool, Dead, Deadpool mm. ten in Blade Three, he got it down to a four, and that's still a nine for the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, man. Yeah, but uh, I, Blade Three, they just really fumbled it up. That was fair. But yeah, Blade One or two, Blade was really good. I really I I you know what, that's one of those movies I could just throw on at any time too. Oh man, the the first the first half of Blade is just perfection. 
just how they, they get to it immediately. They already established. Blade is already established right. on who he is. Yeah, like, yeah, there's yeah, no, yeah, yeah. There's no, there's no origin, origin build up. Yeah, there's no, no origin story. You don't need like, it. He shows up yeah. at the club. The vampires are like, oh, shit. shit Blade is here. <laughs> and he goes to work. That's our intro. Yeah. And then um, it was just rapid fire after that. Well, uh, also, watched- you, you know what's also good about Blade, uh, that, that, that opening you're talking about, not to cut you off, but I just want to continue uh-huh. just because – um. Oh my God! What was that? Th- that girl is like a famous porn star. Oh yeah, T- Tracy Lord. Tracy Lords, exactly. Tracy Lords. That was yep. Tracy Lords, and like from our childhood, Tracy Lords was like this famous underage. Like it, it all it right. was exposed, and she was sixteen and all this shit. So it was like it was like a seedy underbelly. So to have right. her be that character, it, it, mm-hmm. it added to. The, the, the ambiance of the, this, like the vampires are just terrible. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, they're just gritty as anything goes. It's like, and this was our intro to the movie. Like, oh, Tracy Lord. I know. And then like. Luring them to the club. And then a little, little tr- uh, Blade trivia is, you know, when they get to the club, that guy that's opening the door. That was uh-huh. actually her real boyfriend. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, in real life, that was Tracy Lord's boyfriend. So that's just wow. a little, little inside info. Yeah, but yeah, Blade was good. I really enjoyed Blade of the of the Marvel movie. Like, and I, that's a Marvel movie, even though it yeah. wasn't a Marvel movie the way we know it now. But at the right. time, it was a Marvel movie. So I really, yeah. I really, and I don't know how this new Blade. I like that guy, but he seems a little old to be Blade. Mm, okay, just, I like just uh, how he looks. But I don't know. I like, I like his visual. Like I, I feel like he he has the visual for for that type of character. Like a because he he can look like a vampire. Like he's dark, lean, yeah. tall. I can see him like you know with the blade. But he looks too much like Wesley Snipes to me. So it just it just makes it seem like you know you know he's like Ring. yeah it's just like the same thing. It's like but it's not the same. So I don't like that. Yeah. Go with somebody mm, okay. Carmel now or something, or go. You know what I mean? Like, make, go go with Rick Fox or like, you know what I'm saying? Like a different nah, look. We we can't. We gotta keep. Oh, Blade got to be midnight. <laughs> yeah, we gotta keep him. Because then once he comes in with my complexion, he nigga, oh yeah. hell no, yeah, man. He, he can't be six forty five. He gotta be midnight. <laughs> yeah, he got to be. This white, he got to be this color. Or this white beater right here, microphone black. <laughs> That's a must. <laughs> no, I, I tell, yeah, I see. I know what you're saying. So you got Blade, and then I totally agree with you about um, Robert Downey playing um, Iron Tony, Man. Tony, Tony. Yeah, yeah. Tony, it Tony was just, just it carried it actually carried the whole series. Yeah, because I know it was I just could, like he yeah. is Iron Man. Yeah. He is Iron Man. Even though Iron Man been here since the '60s, Robert Downey Jr. is Iron Man now. Yeah. Yeah. Same with Wesley Snipes' Blade. It's just like those guys. They're going to have to recast Iron Man eventually, but Robert Downey Jr. made the character itself more popular. Yeah, well, I mean, it killed him. You know, I I, I, was, I got teared up in the movie in the, in the, in the last oh, in the game. Yeah, I thought it was like my even... soul. <laughs> my soul, man. I was just like. Uh, <laughs> it was good. <laughs> Man, it, let me tell you something about Endgame real quick. Go ahead. I, I said that was my favorite movie of 2019 because, uh, and I, I I say Infinity War is better, but Endgame, the, the whole, the movie as a whole and the whole movie going experience was just the most fun I've had in the movie theater and, since I was a kid, probably. Yeah. Like it was electric because we saw it on opening weekend. We were in a random city. We piled in there, and uh, it was like we were at a sporting event. Yeah, but that's ten we, years. But that's ten years in the making, though. You have to oh, remember yeah. that too. Mm-hmm. You know, and I and I disagree with you. I like the end game better than Infinity War. Oh really? really? I I just like because I f- I felt like I was getting kind of bored with end game. Cause it was, it was so long in the in the first you know yeah, half of it, I was just like, all right, guys, you know what yeah, I'm saying. Let's but get to it. Infinity War was like this. It was like boom, 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 boom. Thanos is coming. Thanos is here. You know, I'm tell you my plan. I'm I'm gonna execute it. Look out, man. Give me these Infinity Gems. It was like rapid fire. <laughs> he won, and then it went off. I was just like, yeah, that's what I'm saying too. Though I was like, he was the hero of the story. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. 
Yeah, he I, won. It was just like now let me let me now let me ask you this because I remember. Mm-hmm. So did you like Black Panther? <laughs> did I like who? Black Panther. I did. Here, here's my thing about Black Panther because a lot of people are calling it overrated. Because because it, um, it was. <laughs> Here's what I like about Black Panther, and I'm going I'm to do the origin story argument here. Okay. As far as the origin stories go, it was one of the strongest comic book story, comic book movie origins, because it established, it established so many dope characters outside of the initial character. A lot of times, they, they, they overshadowed Black Panther. In terms of like uh, the the rival clan leader, um, his younger sister, his general, um, the villain, the other villain in Claw, it was just like the total ensemble and world build was just really dope. Okay, I I I could not disagree with you more. I mean, if uh-huh. I could disagree with you more, I would find a way to disagree with you more. <laughs> First of all, Civil War, Captain America: Civil War. The right. version of Black Panther in that movie far surpassed this pussy that they created in the Black agree. Panther. I agree. He had agree. purpose, you know. He he, and then he he had the redemption in the end to realize that revenge wasn't gonna. He just was a stronger, more established character. And then in I this agree. other movie, I'm like, who's this guy? Who is this guy? <laughs> right. Okay. And then and then I agree with that. And then it, okay, so this other clan leader. Mm-hmm. He has been loyal to the crown for 20, 30 years, whatever. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, some stranger could come in and make him turn? No way. Because Wait, make who turn? The, 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 his, the, the, other, the other leader, the guy with the rhinos, where his, you know, the rhino guy. Oh, oh hey. well, that, that, but they established why he switched. Well, it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough? It wasn't enough. Because let me tell you something else. Why would they only be one Black Panther? Why? Why? What you mean? They have the ability to make everybody in Wakanda Black Panther. <laughs> mm. But the, but the, but that's your that's your tradition, though. Right. So you're talking that's about a, okay. So you're talking about a society that respects mm. tradition. Right. Why, why would that guy turn? I, I I know why he turned. Here, here's the thing. He, let me let me uh, paint Please. the picture on why he would paint turn. it for me because. That movie's terrible. Okay, it's not even terrible? in the it's not even in the top it's not even in the top ten Marvel movies. Okay, I can name you ten movies in the Marvel universe that's better than that movie. But that was the just on, but just that, on the MCU, just in the MCU, man. That that movie was in the that movie was like on par with the first Captain America, which was like oh, hell which was no. pretty bad. <laughs> Hell no! That shit was like Thor two. <laughs> uh, no, no. Um, because because they they were building the tension between him and uh, the general because he wanted he wanted his father's uh, killers. He wanted his father's death avenged. Yeah. So it was like, yo, let, let me let me get claw. Let me let me get in on that claw takedown. And so they were they were building that riff. He was like, "Yeah, yeah, we're gonna get claw." He was like, "Let me get in on the claw takedown. We're gonna get the claw, but let me go with you." And so here's a guy. Here's a guy that comes out of nowhere, gets the job done, brings claw in dead, and he has a Wakandan bloodline. So of course he's gonna be like, "I like the way this guy moves." T'Challa lied to me and was like, "Yo." We're going to get clawed. We're going to get clawed. But you kept brushing it to the side. Wouldn't bring me along. This guy comes in. This is what I'm saying. Job's finished. But this is what I'm saying about the Black Panther version in that movie. I needed the Black Panther version that was defending, going to, you know, uh, avenge his father's death. Where's that guy? Well, he had to change her heart already. He's getting beat up on a a mountain? Like, you have the most advanced technology. And by the way, by the way, there's no way. That nobody knows about Wakanda. It's just come on. <laughs> with that, come with on. that. That's come just on, all on. Marvel, Marvel storytelling. <laughs> come on now, it's, it's Marvel storytelling right nobody there. Nobody knows about Wakanda. Get out of here. 
that that's the whole appeal of, of, of Wakanda. It's just a secret world of just but that but that's just true to the comic book right there. Yeah. I you can't know. you can't fault the movie for that. I just I just I it just wasn't one of it wasn't my favorite of the Marvel. I and like I said, I thought I think I think Civil War was was better. I think oh, yeah. I think uh Winter Soldier was better, one of the best yep. ones. Both, I agree. Both of it, three of the Avengers were better, you know. No, the first one and the last two. That Ultron one, I could do without that one. The event, the first. Let's let's be real about the first Avengers. Uh huh. The first thirty minutes was shaky as hell. Yeah, but they had to. But here's the thing, though. The first thirty, well, that, that, it had that big sequence. I mean, the thing is, they had to establish. How these people are gonna come together and what has been happening because they've been working on it for eight years before that. You know, after right. every movie, they were like hinting towards it. Here's Nick Fury. Here's you know, like here we go. This is right. what's gonna happen. Here's how it's gonna happen. Here's how it's, you know. And then they finally had to put it together. But look, yeah, okay. So they started shaky, but they ended well. Like mm-hmm. like one of the best scenes in the whole MCU is the first time you saw all of them standing there and the camera pans around all the Avengers for the first time. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And you're seeing them standing there. It's like, oh, Captain America. Yeah. You know. And I was like, because I used to collect the Avengers comic book. Right. You Me know, too. So, yeah. So to, so to see. These guys on screen like that for the first time was like amazing to me. You know? Oh, it you was know? epic! Yeah, that was the epic. way they ended. The way it ended, the final battle, I was just like, my head exploded. Yeah, and that's why I loved in that end game how they kind of went back to it. You know, yeah, <laughs> to give us that. He finally got to say Avengers Assemble, and it was just, it was on and crazy. It was beautiful. Yeah, but I'm coming back to Black Panther. No, go ahead, go ahead. My bad. Hold on. So if you if you look. They stay in the traditional aspect as long as they could, yeah. because even though even though we know Killmonger was the villain and he did shady shit to get where he got to get in there, they still honored the fact that he he was a legit bloodline. They they lied and kept it a secret that T'Challa's dad did some shady shit. Right. They swept that under the rug, so it was just like. But we still going to follow the traditional guidelines. The general had to stay because T'Challa lost the one-on-one fight. So they had to honor that. And it was just like, uh, ah, the traditions. And so... I thought that uh, character was so... I thought that I wanted to see more about that character. I thought that's which one the the main the Michael P. Jordan. Uh, who, okay, Killmonger. Yeah, yeah, I thought that his character mm-hmm. was so much more interesting than the whole movie. Like to know that, like, like let's let, let me see what you know, the way someone grows up in darkness, the way someone has this like chip on their shoulder, and like right. it, it, it's like they turn them into a cartoon character in the end. But like leading up to that, I wanted to know more, and then it was like because that came out of nowhere that he that he you know he kills the white guy that we think is the real villain, and then he and then you're like oh wait what's going on here, and then he and then he yeah. just like the next thing you know he's king. I just think the story was muddy. I I don't think it was a well told story. I don't think mm-hmm. it was put together well, but it's just one of those things. Like, I don't know if you're watching Black as Fuck. Are you watching Black as Fuck? I, I haven't started it yet, but I'm going to watch it. Yeah, you got to watch it. This is, it's a little shaky at first, but there's this one great episode where he's discussing, like, a, a, it's, it's an episode about should black people support black art just mm-hmm. because it's black? Right. You know, and, and this idea that because of the, the political climate, white people support black stuff. Just because it's black too, so they can yeah. feel, so they can feel like, and for sure, Black Panther uh, was that was what was going on during that movie. That was I said this in my special. It was the white guilt movie of the decade. Like every white <laughs> guilt movie of the decade. Yeah, because all white people were like, oh, oh, did you? Oh, did you see? Oh my god, it was so good. Black Panther was. <laughs> oh, I saw it. It was such an important movie. It was so. It was yeah. like shut the fuck up. You didn't like this movie. You didn't like this movie. <laughs> it was good though. It was all like right. it, it was hey, actually. It was I. Right. It was I. Right. <laughs> I enjoyed it because yeah. they had a strong. What I didn't like, I tell you, what I didn't like. Mm-hmm. I didn't like the fact that he just turned into. I'm I hate a, it when they always Mama's fall boy. back on the. <laughs> no, no. Let me let me fight the evil version of myself as oh, a right. superhero. Right, right. Let me fight the bad Black Panther. Same in Iron Man. Yeah. When Iron Man had to fight Jeff Bridges in the Iron Suit, I was yeah. like, ah, here we go. And so, um, but his his motivation as a villain was fantastic. Right. It was like, all right, it was a solid. 
Yeah, his villain. motivation as a villain is what I'm saying. It's like I would have preferred to see more about that. It's like right. It's like they built up Thanos to the point where you go, I get it. Like I, yeah. I love the fact that he was just on a farm. Like you know, I did it. I, you know, the, the universe is thriving now. Thank you. You're welcome. Right. You know what I mean? In the end, he believed. You know, and the fact that he even like destroyed the stones because he was like, look, I don't want the temptation of being a yeah, god. He was just like, I just yeah. wanted to like make the universe because my because you you like it's like you saw his planet was destroyed from overpopulation so right. that was his motivation all along that he lost everyone and so he was right. like so you you could i they built that up where you were like okay you almost were like mm. well maybe I, you know he ain't all that bad or like yeah. he's just misguided he need there's other ways how about right. you use the stones and just remove pollution you know what i mean how about right. you use the stones and make the planets three times bigger like how about mm-hmm. you use this i mean there's so many other solutions that you could do with this ultimate power instead of right. like how about you shrink everybody three you know make everybody like you know half the size Make everything right. half the size on the planet so there's more space on the planets. You know what I mean? He mm-hmm. could have done so much more with his uh <laughs> Right. His thought was like, let me just kill everybody. I just think I it's short kill it's, it's 50% <laughs> of everybody. I just think it's I just think it's short sighted. And so you right. also have the power to bring everybody back to, like, you know, uh, whatever the mm-hmm. then then just, you know, pollution, gone. Yeah. You know, <laughs> Water clean, you know. You know what I mean. Well, <laughs> pollution would have been a bad idea because it would have came back. He was just like, I'm gonna just obliterate all that because everything that we've been doing would have just came back. So he's just like, you know what? I'm gonna just get rid of. How half about of this Re- reusable energy? Boom. <laughs> That's I'm valid. Just, I'm just saying, it's like it's it, so. He didn't think this plan through. Is <laughs> my yeah. point about it. He could have thought about this plan a little bit more. <laughs> he was just like, "Nah, I'm getting rid of everything." And if you notice, <laughs> I noticed you say you read comics. Yeah. They took away the element that he was obsessed with death. They took that out of it. Oh. Because in the comic book, he was obsessed with the, with death. Yeah. So he just wanted to appease death by killing out half of existence in the universe. And what better way to get in death's good graces is by to kill everybody. Yeah, it was over flooded. Um, and I'm yeah. also glad, speaking of the MCU, is like they got, when they put, um, God damn, that's a lot of water. Um, when they put uh, the Spider, I'm glad, I was glad when Spider Man came in. You know, and I'm also yeah. glad that they fixed, they made it, they, they worked out that deal between Sony. Cause Me too. Because Sony was sucking a bag of dicks. Like they just don't know how to make movies. You know, they just don't they, they don't. don't. they don't. Neither does the people that make the DC movies. They no. don't know what they're doing either. They should like no. that. They should let the lady that made Wonder Woman just have her take over, because she obviously yeah. understands how to like tell a story, put the story together, film it properly. Because the rest of this shit is just because they like they've dropped the ball so hardcore. You know, with Justice League, with Justice League, with all that, with the Supermans, mm-hmm. Superman versus Batman. Even though that Batman fight. When he was rescuing, yes, the mom was Agreed. was the greatest Batman display. Agreed, cinematic Batman display ever, e- ever easy. And and it was an homage to the video game. I don't know if you've ever played the video game, the Batman Arkham Knight. I never, I have it, but I never played. Oh, it. you need to play that. That because uh, because everything he did in that fight is an homage to that game. He used the grappling yes. hook. He used the disruptor. He used the batarangs. He used the the, the the grapple. You know, it's just it's such a great fight. You know, they, but yeah. the thing the thing they dropped the ball in that movie is they didn't explain to me enough. Actually, no. wait at all why Batman turned? Why he decided I'm gonna kill people? Because oh it, yeah, because because yeah. the thing that makes Batman who he is is his honor. Mm-hmm. You know, like he can he is uncorruptible. Right, you know, and that right there, they they it just if you're a Batman fan, just so even a yeah. you're just like ah, oh, this Batman wouldn't do that. The whole movie, I'm going, Batman wouldn't do that. Right, right. You know, Batman wouldn't. Have he done was that. killing people. He was yeah. Was if, like, you, if you look at the Dark Knight, he easily could have killed Joker seven times. Yeah, he every never time, did it. every time. Never did, it. <laughs> never did it. You know what I mean? So I just did. I, that was the one thing I didn't like, and I actually. I personally liked Ben Affleck as Batman. I thought he did a Me great job. Too. I thought he did a great job. I all the hate he was getting, I was like, I don't get this. He was a great I Batman. I thought he was good as yeah, Batman. Yeah, he he was, looked, that's the best Batman has ever looked in costume to me was in 
Batman versus Superman. Yeah. His the the grayish black. Yeah, the, just the, his whole the, the whole look is my favorite look of Batman on film so far. And that you're right, that fight is because even though the Christopher Nolan Batman trilogy is great, the fight choreography has been suspect. Uh-huh. And all three of those. Well, I just dis- I disagree with you about that. Those three in totality are not great. Um, I think that the first one is the best because it was that to me was the best origin story of Batman on screen. Like to really that's a great origin story. Yeah, to, and it also it also changed the genre. By the way, that mm. was the first superhero movie that was like a, a real movie. Like it was like heat. Yeah. It was like, you know, The Godfather yeah. or something. You know, just the way it was filmed, the way Nolan filmed it, the way he took the acting serious. It wasn't cartoony. That right. changed the genre. And I think that right. was a great origin story for uh, a Batman movie. But, like, not for no fault of their own, Heath Ledger died, you know? Like, he mm-hmm. died, and they had to change the movie. Like, they had to they, – they, like, the second one had four parts, that Two Face area was like such a waste of space, mm-hmm. and so I think I think it, you know who know and who knows what part three would have been if Joker was still alive. You know what I mean? Right. If they right. Would, you know because you can't just change the guy. Let's get a new Joker all of a sudden. But I guess they could have because of this latest Joker. But uh, right. you know, I don't know, man. I just think that like that the Bane one I thought was ridiculous. You know the Bane. The Bane was easily my least favorite of the three. Yeah, me and too. then the way he went out. Don't even get me started on that. Yeah. So you think the Dark Knight is overrated? Is that what you just said? Yes, I do think the Dark Knight is overrated, but it's not because it's it's only because of. It, let me give you another example of something like you know in Gladiator. Remember Gladiator? You know the guy mm-hmm. died. A guy died in the making of Gladiator. The um mm. the the guy that was the uh his the, the guy that 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 had Maximus trained as a gladiator. The guy that was the he oh, ran yeah, that, yeah. that guy yeah. died, that guy died. So I was read, so I was reading about how it was supposed to change the movie. Like the, he was going to have a moment where he was going to be in the the. They had to change it. You know, when you a hundred million in, yeah, and somebody dies, you want to honor the person's death, but right. you a hundred million in. <laughs> you a hundred million in. So it's like you keep going. His name was Oliver Reed. Yes, that there was you the go. Guy. Yes. Yeah. So, yep. what, so what I'm saying is, um, they had to. The movie was still great. That's one of the, my favorite movies. But they had mm-hmm. to change it. What I'm saying is, because I I think Heath Ledger died when they were in the process of editing the movie or like still filming. They were still gonna maybe film some stuff. I don't know if that's true or not. But I do know that his death affected the outcome of the movie. I know they, that, I didn't know that. Yeah. I thought they were done already. No, I think that his death affected like you know what they were going to do with it. because you remember this too is that they knew it was going to be a trilogy. Yeah, like he already so Joker dies. It has to change how this movie goes because of what's going to happen in the next movie. So mm-hmm. it affected things in a way that I thought I didn't think that they handled it well enough because mm-hmm. I just thought Dark Knight was too much. It's like it's like he was doing all this stuff, and then when it, when it got to the point where they were on the boats and they had to pick, that's the point where I was like, "This is too much. You've mm. gone. You're you're reaching too far. The movie was too long. At that point, we're we're an hour two when you know mm. a more Joker's doing more shit, and yeah. then we still have to deal with Two Face. It just was too much. So <laughs> I just feel like Dark Knight was overrated because of that, but not, by, by by no fault of their own. And then like again, the Bane one was just ridiculous. I'm gonna have to disagree with you on the first movie to take it seriously on the comic book tip. Why? I'm gonna give that to Blade. Okay, no, no, I, I I agree, but but here's the thing though, like you said though in Blade, it wasn't necessarily an origin story. Blade was already Blade. Oh, you mean as far as origin story as taking it as seriously? An, as far as an origin okay. story of like showing how Bruce Wayne became Batman, yeah. Yeah. there isn't a better showing of that because. There's there's mm-hmm. a couple characters in a uh, superhero universe that everyone knows the origin story. Just a common person. If you say, you know, Batman, Superman, and Spider-Man, everybody right. knows how they became superheroes. Right. I, I, I even think Spider-Man's probably number one. You know, he got bit mm-hmm. by a radioactive spider. And, you know, right. and even people know about Uncle Ben. You know what I mean? Like, oh, Uncle Ben right. died. And, you know, so it's like it's one of those stories people know. Like, like how many times we got to see Bruce Wayne's parents being killed? 
Right. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, we okay, where are you going to show? Because cause this is what I didn't like about the Joker, this, this latest movie Joker. Joaquin Phoenix is like 55. Mm-hmm. Batman in that movie was 10. <laughs> that was a huge like. So by the time that, but by the time Bruce Wayne becomes Batman, this Joker gonna be, he gonna be eighty eight or like how old is he gonna be? You know what I mean? He, he gonna be up there, man. <laughs> he gonna be an old he ass Joker. So I, that was the one part that I was like, I wish they would have just made Bruce Wayne in college. You know what I'm saying? Right. But they need. But it was like it's the symmetry of it is the night that Joker went there crazy. Bruce Wayne's family dies, and that's how you go. Yeah. You keep it. I get it. I get mm-hmm. it. But then get a younger actor. But that Joaquin Phoenix was just spectacular in that role. So you get it. Right. But now they're making a sequel. So now I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. How you gonna like, be? Like, where gonna take? What is he? What is he gonna be like? Are they go? Is he gonna be in like a cryo chamber for like 10, 20 years? And then he comes right. out. Is it gonna be like Austin Powers? <laughs> you know what I mean. But he, but here's the question: Like, how old is Joker? Because this is the second time they tried to they tried to say the Joker was involved in the death of uh, yes. Bruce's parents because they did that in the Jack Nicholson joint. Did the Jack Nicholson one? And he was like Jack Nicholson at the time was like in his fifties or whatever. Yeah. But at yeah. that point, so, though, but being twenty years older than Batman is one thing. You know, yeah. but when you go to like 30, 40 years older than Batman, you're like, I right. don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but, but what I'm saying is like, so in terms of like an origin story, like that's a great origin story, though. That Joker origin story is fantastic. The yeah. Joker. So it's an origin yeah. story. Blade wasn't an origin story. So, right, right, so, right. so that's why I'm saying Batman Begins is a better origin story. Batman okay. Begins is like, you know, you see. It, it just everything made sense. You oh you go oh yeah he trained as a ninja with mm-hmm. this secret organization and he was the best. And right. then his on and, and and in that movie too you see his honor even in that movie it started mm-hmm. there. He's like I'm not gonna kill this guy. We're supposed to be the good guys. And then right. and then he went on to be you know to be Batman. You know what I mean? Right. But but he would have got like coronavirus if it was real because apparently all this shit comes from bats. So he was in this cave. He would have got sick and died. Right. So back, uh, you know, uh, the guano. And <laughs> yeah, the yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? He's so I don't know. Done. Yeah, but I think that was a great origin story. And there's not that many really great origin superhero stories. You know, the I Black thought, Panther. Well, no, no, that wasn't an origin story though. Not really. It wasn't an origin story because he again, the, the world was already established. The, these are the best origin that's stories. True. All right, this recent mm-hmm. Joker. Batman Begins and the first Iron Man. That was a great yeah. origin story. Because first Iron Man was dope. Because the way they set up, you believed the technology. And this is another thing I don't like about Black Panther. So mm-hmm. a meteorite comes. Like the technology was too far fetched. Like I couldn't mm-hmm. wrap my brain around the nanotechnology. Like not the way like in Iron Man, you believe that what he was doing was possible. Even though it's not possible. But the way they set it up and showed it, you were like, oh, Tony Stark is brilliant, and this is how he would have, like, you know. But once you get into, like, magic, because that's what Black Panther is. It's magic. And then you start to go, come on. Come on. Is it magic? Yes. It's basically it's, magic. Um, it's meteorite magic. But, but, but that's the, the meteorite magic. But it's all, it's all like, but that's, again, you, you got you to gotta come at the source material. Yeah, I know. Because this is where... You know, we already knew that the vibranium is why Wakanda was so advanced and secret. Yeah. It was because of the vibranium that they had, which which is Captain America's shield and all of that. So Yeah. Um but that's again, all the source material that you're coming for. But again, when you when you when you come up with uh well like you frozen right now. Let me let me let me let you uh unfreeze for a second. All right. Um but what were we just talking about? Right. The origin story of Black Panther, the origin story of how the uh, they the got their power, got the vibranium, the, yeah. all that stuff. I just like I'm okay with vibranium and not knowing where it came from, and then them using it. Like like Tony Stark and his father Howard Stark, them using vibranium is one thing. For 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 and also by the way, it it goes into like Wolverine and, and X Men universe too. Like vibranium. No, Wolverine is adamantium. Adamantium. Oh, my bad. Yeah, again, though. Different, yeah. But again, that's one of those things where, as long as you don't know where it comes from, you just know mm-hmm. that it exists. That's 
that's better than knowing where it came from. And then now you have to be like, well, how did you actually do that? You know, it's like, mm-hmm. you, know, you know what I mean? Like these flowers and I don't know. I just, I'm, I'm not, I'm, 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 I'm so, I'm really anti Black Panther. I just thought that story was so muddled, you know? <laughs> But again, you know what? We're, we're coming. This is like over an hour, and you know, I think we're gonna have to do this again. We're gonna have to have a part two. Uh, we're really gonna go into like both universes, the MCU and the DC universe, uh, just to see, uh, you know, where. Oh shit! You really there? You go. You froze again. There we go. Yeah, I, I lost you for a second. That's what I'm saying. We both, yeah, you were like frozen on the screen. We gonna have perfect. to, we gonna have to sequel this up. Yeah, yeah, we gonna have to go yeah. again. Uh, you know, but anyways, let me, let me, let me just wait. I gotta get a good. Let me just get a good screen to go out with. <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait, it's coming, it's coming. I don't know why. Like it's like so, like somebody's on the internet or something in both of our places. It's like it's like really weird. Like it was it was you should have seen how crisp the picture was, and now all of a sudden it's just. Not okay. Here we go. We're, yeah, we're, it's you claymated it over there. Yeah, you too. It's weird. I wonder what that is, but it don't matter for me. B, that's just your reference. The my camera I'm using it looks great. It's gonna be great. Um, okay. Let me put another marker. All right, but anyways, you know what? We're gonna continue our conversation about these movie universes. The next time you come on, we'll just strictly talk movies because I really like talking about movies. Okay. You know? Yeah. You know, and I like I love that you're a comic book nerd and you. Uh, oh man. Yes. So we got to have to get into that. So this is probably call this part one with Tony Baker. And, you know, check out Tony on his Instagram because he really does these really funny uh, voiceover videos where he like, you, you know, it's it, it could be anything. You know, you, he just he just does the voiceover of the video that's and the video is already like either crazy or funny. And then he just he just enhances it even more and then you get lost on your page so you, you know everybody go to Tony's <laughs> Instagram and I'll have all the links and all that stuff up right there and look Thanks, man, I man. want you to stay safe I want you to be well uh, I'm glad that you enjoy, you know making the best of this uh, oh, yeah. best of this time with you and your family and I wish you all the best and you know I'm gonna talk to you in like another 10 days and we'll uh, you know have a part 2 Tony B oh yeah definitely TV. definitely <laughs> Let's get it, man. Yeah? All right, man. It's good to talk to you, and uh, thanks for being on, all right? All right, bro. All right, take care.